What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. Today's video is going to be on another top 10 bands slash discussion or list with you guys. And before I will be diving into this one, I want to say thank you very much to a lot of people who I have not seen before, to even some subscribers of mine who had been interested at that time to check out the previous top 10 video that I had done. It was a video on the top 10 bands who I cannot get into whatsoever. It was really fun to see. The amount of the growing attention is all down to you guys. You guys made it possible. I just didn't expect that type of video to, I guess, blow up. It was cool to see different reactions to comments, despite that I had to deal with some dumb-minded negative comments and trolls. I had to respond to these types of people. It's really dumb sometimes that anyone who was curious at first to watch a top 10 video on anything at all and then to be basically idiots for sharing attention in a negative close mindset. With that being said guys, after that video I thought why not do another top 10 video on a different topic this is a completely not ranked, randomized list of mine that I want to share of top 10 bands who are overhated. This is not a very definitive list, but these are the bands I've been thinking of to be added to the list. I've been thinking about it for a few days, pretty much since I had uploaded my previous top 10 video. Let's continue this game. Keep it up and going. Share your comments and picks down below for this discussion. The first band to my list is Dream Theater. Dream Theater are one of my favorite progressive metal bands, but over time there were some negative to critical comments saying around the repetitiveness of the songs to the style of songwriting, the pretentiousness is what's getting to a lot of people and as well as with some of the later stuff that is not as great as the early stuff uh, and everything will be just feeling the same or be very little to find different things in their music. What I will say is I think Dream Theatre have been finding different ideas and roots through pretty much the whole existence of the band. I'm one of those fans who really likes a lot of their discography, even though some of the latest stuff do sound really bloated, like, for example, the worst Dream Theater album being The Astonishing. But having said that, I think they have been open to find differences through either a story or to create something that is always going to be sticking things together through their signature sound. It does sound predictable for anybody, but I know they have been completely advanced, mind-blowing, uh, wizardry-made musicians, and I do admire the band for their talents and passions. Dream Theater's stuff, sometimes for me, do get pretty similar Besides, they have been experimenting with different tunings and through the variety of influences, especially with Mike Portnoy, uh, who's so gigantic of a music fanatic who loves classic rock to prog rock, heavy metal, experimental stuff. I'm one of those defenders who loves some of Dream Theater's later stuff, or some of them I really liked. Like, I'm a big fan of the Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. I do enjoy a lot of the self-titled album back in 2013 when it came out. I defended the Mike Mangini period of the band. But besides that, I always love the albums like with Images and Words to Awake and Metropolis Part 2 and a defender of the Falling Into Infinity album. I do understand where people are coming from, but despite these criticisms or just negative words about the band, Dream Theater are still as incredibly prolific. They're not my favorite progressive metal band because Mastodon takes the cake. 
However, with that being said, Dream Theater are always one of those prog metal bands that I always really enjoy listening to whenever I would be in the mood to blast their music out. The next band is extremely obvious. There's no escape for this band. Just because they are the biggest metal band in the world with millions and millions and millions and millions of albums sold, they are not for everybody. And that is Metallica. We know these very samey negative views about the band. People see them as egos or sellouts or saying other things like the whole Napster controversy ruined uh, you know, the importance of Metallica or their later stuff's not the same. They should just, you know, go back and do something that is, you know, as great, but make it better like the uh, early stuff. You know, comments like these sometimes do get under my skin a little bit. I love Metallica and I do think they are overrated, but I still am a fan of their stuff. I don't think they have been highly egotistical uh, because of them being the biggest band of all time in metal history. Yeah, their personalities may have changed all down to the fact through the intensifying media attention through the press to news and, you know, anyone who would get in the way without, you know, giving Metallica a lot of space. Uh, but, you know, it's just the overall worldwide phenomenon Metallica has been for many years. But even though, yes, sometimes people would think of them differently, they are great guys from what I have been seeing through different interviews. And despite with James Hetfield, who had a very troubled, difficult life, he's one of those guys who does sound like a really cool guy. The whole later album thing, I understand that it's not what you wanted, but it's Metallica being Metallica themselves. They have been the heart of themselves throughout their whole career, making you know really ballsy experiments that some of it does work, and obviously sometimes it doesn't work. Like the Load and Reload albums and the Saint Anger album, However, when it comes to some of the later stuff, I defend my opinion that 72 Seasons is one of the strongest Metallica albums in their whole discography. Yes, the rehashing thing can be so predictable, but that album, to me, has some of the strongest hooks, memorable songs, and some of my new favourite later era Metallica songs. With everything that has been said about Metallica in many different comments, either positively or negatively, you know, there's no rhyme or wrong to always admire what Metallica had to offer to millions of us who made metal still as powerful and relevant from then to today. And I have no issues with them being open to create something that sounds good to them. You just can't really expect bands like Metallica to repeat themselves. And they will never ever make an album like the classic stuff ever again. It's just sometimes completely annoying that people see Metallica as, you know, not the same anymore when Metallica has been pretty much the same band. The next band, I won't go into this one so long, it is Greta Van Fleet. I will admit, I was not happy or so invested at the Battle of Gardens Gate, nor with Starcatcher. Those two albums are huge disappointing mixed bags, but I do like the earlier stuff better, Defending Anthem of the Peaceful Army. Whether you see them either as highly talented musicians, which obviously they are, but to still call them out for being rip-offs or copycats to sound so similar to bands like Rush and Led Zeppelin, etc. I do know 
that will never be away from the band ever because yes they do sound similar but that does not mean their talents are awful they're not bad these guys are humans any band is involved with humans who can play and do what they want to create and Greta Van Fleet is one of those bands they don't really care about the criticisms but despite that they do sound like really cool open-minded guys and I still give them a lot of props for them being really talented musicians especially in today's generation through young artists and young bands who have that passion who have the heart of knowing what it's like to be in a growing popular band so besides some of the things I've said about the latest stuff from the band I do enjoy Greta Van Fleet for some time the next band is Disturbed I don't mind still listening to Disturbed despite that I did become highly critical on their divisive album I did not care about the album at all I had lost interest in the band after when Immortalized came out and still hated their cover of Simon and Garfunkel's The Sound of Silence but I enjoy Disturbed for the time being the personality of David Draymond and with the rest of the band I do see them as highly positive very supportive people and while I did not think very positively around the whole political messaging on divisive the biggest thing that I would give respect and admiration for to the band is the personal attachment to the fans and anyone who are struggling with their own paths through personal difficulties or mental health these guys are there who are all into helping anyone out they are there for one another and it's sometimes difficult for bands to be in that mindset disturbed musically yes when I look at the lyrics do sound extremely dated and heavily cheesy the music did have that interest it gave me nostalgia I used to be a, a pretty big fan of the band I still have some of their earlier albums on CD but Disturbed as a band have never been one of those who I would personally target with just because of what I said on the later stuff or you know their overall progression as a band now the next two bands I'm going to put them together two bands into one Ghost and Baby Metal and I will say why they're in this list Ghost are as an incredibly passionate band they have their own characteristics their form of identity they are so artistic the passion to deliver the goods throughout this poppy arrangement of music bits of hard rock later on with a lot of melody with horror Halloween theme types of lyrics and anything else that fits in with the band's identity I think that is great stuff understand why they're so successful Ghost are one of the best examples of that their fan base is fantastic I sometimes would see some clips through any age of the band's fans they are there for the music and the art I was not a fan of their Impera album when it came out I thought it was a huge mixed bag I did enjoy a lot of Meliora when that album came out in 2015 I still think that Opus Eponymous is their strongest album but the adventurousness the virtuosity still remains to this day that I don't have any issue with some people see them as like a gimmick which I don't think that is really the case because Ghost are one of those bands who's completely interesting into having a theme and sometimes it's rare for bands to have a theme like what bands of Ghost and others 
who would find their own roots, their own take on originality. Ghost are still a decent sounding band, but I don't have any issues with at all. And Baby Metal is pretty much the exact same thing. I will give Baby Metal so much credit here. They had the balls to experiment. Japanese pop through vocal harmony and quantized studio editing and mix it up in some kind of cauldron with metal. The best thing about baby metal is they're so unapologetic. People just take them way too seriously because of what they look like. Young Japanese girls with music through intensity and heavy riffs and wild soloing etc and to get away with something that is I would say very listenable to any audience. Bands like with Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention to Captain Beefheart and his magic band Mr. Bungle to name a few those types of bands are so distinctive they are as experimental, but they are separate in their own progression and determination to keep the artistic form going. Baby Metal is doing the exact same thing. So it's a bit of a shame that Baby Metal sometimes continues to see comments through anyone who would see them as annoying or unlistenable or just too silly but to take the piss. So yeah, that is why I would mention Ghost and Baby Metal in these exact same types of, of phrases and uh, explorations of what I wanted to say, why I think they're overhated. The next two bands, again, two bands in the new metal vein of metal music into this video, Mudvayne and Cold Chamber. I really like Mudvayne. Mudvayne is just one of those bands whose career, to me, is super underappreciated and as underrated. Sure, it's no LD50 through the later stuff, but just like with some of the bands here in this list, they have explored. They wanted to continue their own direction as a band. LD50 is one album that, that I obviously did not mention about at all so many times, but LD50 is one of my favourite albums of all time. I think it was a unique album. It's all around the drop B tuning and slapping bass and very rhythmic drums, and the vocals, to me, are so groovy. They are highly memorable sounding bands that, to me, creates music in a really intriguing way. I do like the Lost and Found album. I remember the uh, music videos of Determined and Forget to Remember, but these types of bands like Mudvayne are so uh, ignored because they haven't deserved uh, the hate at all, in my opinion. They're just, you know, ungratefully disliked because they're just obviously not like the other greats in the modern metal scene like with Linkin Park to Korn and Slipknot and bands around that ilk of new metal alternative metal crossover type thing but Mudvayne are one of my favorites and Cold Chamber are again another one of my favorites. I was a teenager at the time who did not want to stop listening to the self-titled album. I get it. I understand it's not that original. It's nothing huge of variation. It's so similar sounding at song after song after song after song. But I was in a different mind at the time. I still love that album. No apologies needed there. However, with the later stuff, some of their stuff can be very groovy and Chamber Music, their second album, has some kind of difference in production to maybe gothic type of 
bits and pieces that I really enjoy a lot. It was pretty strange to hear Cold Chamber do a cover of Shock the Monkey, the Peter Gabriel classic, uh, with Ozzy Osbourne, of all guests. Uh, but I didn't mind that cover. Cold Chamber are extremely divided. And to me, that is another huge shame. They are another one of those bands who I enjoy so much. The next band, back to the rock side of music, and that is Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters are so popular, they have been popular, just because of Dave Grohl, who created Foo Fighters after the breakup of Nirvana, and I know Foo Fighters are different, and their hits are mega popular, but I do like them a lot. Dave Grohl is a determined, passionate, highly inspiring musician, and he's one of those people, by the way, who I would have loved to meet. I love Dave Grohl. I do recommend, by the way, his personal, beautiful, and amazing book called The Storyteller. If you haven't checked that book out, if you are a rock fan, or not a Foo Fighters fan at all, go and get that book. But anyway, Foo Fighters are one of those bands who takes me back into my discoveries of music that's full of fun, energy, and the consistency of music that I think is so strong. The melodic side of the music to the singles, extremely passionate, as I've said. They're great for their ability to define themselves as a great rock band. Like with some of the other alternative rock bands who have been successful, like Arctic Monkeys to Biffy Clyro and Kings of Leon, I never had any beef with Foo Fighters at all. Whether you see them as overrated uh, because of the hits being played billions of times or just to think that their music sounds so similar, it doesn't shy away. At least that's my own personal opinion why I really like Foo Fighters a lot. And the last band is going to be Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam are one of those bands that I highly appreciate through their virtuosity and like any band they have never wanted to think about repeating themselves just because of how big you know one of the best classic grunge albums of all time still resonates today. Pearl Jam have never made another album like 10 but I'm one of those fans that enjoys quite a lot through the progression, the adventurous takes on things through sound in their music. Albums like with Yield and No Code and some of the other choices of genres, like with alternative rock to bits of acoustic stuff, Americana and this open-mindedness that these guys have makes me want to discover their material even further. Of course, 10 is one of the classics and really liked Versus and Vitology to making me think about when uh, Lightning Bolt first came out and, you know, Backspace. Uh, but I think Pearl Jam are a really good example because of their own vision, their own artistic detail. Eddie Vedder with his distinctive signature voice, so expressive and highly personal and different theme style lyrics to the overall journey through any Pearl Jam album, whether it's either very strong or very good stuff, they are brilliant. I have never thought that these guys are a bad band to begin with. And with that being said, guys, 
It's just all my personal opinion and say what you want to say with your comments either on these bands I've mentioned on this video or with your list. Drop them in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of these artists or if you want to keep going with your take on overhated bands, go right ahead. Thank you guys for watching and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.